All right, hey guys. You know, it's been a long time since I made a video, but I have a really cool project that I kind of want to talk about. Um, so I'm in my closet here, you can see my clothes behind me, but what I have um, kind of initiated, I can show you here, is a little data monitoring system. So here we have a box inside I have an Arduino. We can kind of see, Get in there, uh, zoom back there, uh, way back there. So I have a soil moisture sensor, and then over here I have a um, humidity and uh, temperature sensor, and then from there I can calculate things like uh, the heat index or or uh, whatever else with those two measurements. Um, but overall, the main goal here is going to be um, let me try to get this back in focus here. Build a system that will allow me to monitor the soil moisture here for this plant. Uh, and then um, from that, I'll be able to hook up a pump to my Arduino here and water it when the, the soil moisture gets kind of low. Um, if we look down here, I have some of the litter, uh, but the soil is, it's kind of dry, uh, but overall there's still some moisture in there. It's, it's got some weight to it yet. And this is just potting mix that I got from Walmart. This particular plant that I have here is a habanero. I had bought it oh, maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, and it came in a really, really small, maybe a three inch by four inch pot and uh, planted it in here. My old habanero had died uh, over the course of the summer. It gets so hot here in Florida uh, and the pots, I can feed them a gallon of water in the evening. And by the time the, the next day evening comes, it's already dry and everything's wilting. It's, it's really hard to maintain, especially in these fabric bags. So what I have here is, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Well, you can probably see it with this one pretty good. Oh, uh, it's not gonna focus too close. There we go. Uh, it's, it's, it's just fabric. Um, and, and the reason for this is that it's supposed to help the plant um, kind of self prune uh, the, the, the roots and stuff. So when the roots get close to the edge here, uh, the drier area will stop the roots from growing further um, as opposed to kind of getting root bound and kind of going around the outside over and over and over. Um, that's supposed to help self prune. You can see these with some other pots. They have hard plastic. So this one's fabric, like I mentioned. They have hard pots where there's actually holes. So from the inside, it looks like they took like a glass bottle, wine bottle, and kind of pushed it through. So there's holes that come out um, from the inside. And the idea is that the plants kind of grow their roots into that hole. And then from there, um, once that hits the air, it stops growing. But the main idea, that I want, or the, the, the main purpose of these next couple videos is going to be to go through the code that I have here. Um, since I'm really into data with the whole bioinformatics stuff, my plan is to kind of use this data, dissect it a little bit. Um, so in here, uh, it's collecting data, uh, you can imagine with the different sensors, there's a SD card in here and it's writing every, I think it's super frequent, maybe every couple of seconds, um, writing the soil moisture, the temperature uh, of the air and the humidity. Um, and here it's going to be pretty consistent. Uh, it's, in, it's in my closet, the door is open. There's not much buildup of heat like outside or in the summer it goes up to I don't know, 95 degrees and the humidity can vary a ton too. Um, but doing this inside because I can have a cord plugged into it. If it's outside, it's, it's can't find an efficient way uh, that can use the SD card while also maintaining a low state of power for uh, that, the, the Arduino. There's ways to put it into low power draw, but regardless, um, the idea of these videos is to use that data, kind of build a self-watering system for the plant and then go through the data and see, okay, is it cycling? 
uh, specific times of the day with, with the light here? Um, or is it kind of random inside when it starts to get warmer outside again? Can maybe go through and see is there a time of day when it's drying out? Like I had mentioned, we can feed it or apply a ton of water in the evening and by tomorrow evening it's already dried out. Um, maybe there's a specific time in the day that we can see in the data where these um, plants that I have outside, all my pepper plants, my, my uh, hibiscus flowers, anything, um, that they're drying out and can kind of just understand, explore a little bit uh, the data that we have. Um, so I'll dive into the code that we are using here for this Arduino um, to use the moisture sensor, uh, the SD card reader and writer, uh, as well as the, the moisture or the humidity sensor here um, in the air. And I can kind of go through the different products and stuff that I have here too, if, if that's of interest to you. So let's dive into that. Okay, so here we are in the Arduino IDE, or the um, development uh, environment here. And so uh, I'll kind of go through line by line. Not everything in here is going to be used. Um, some of it was used while I was kind of playing around with the code a little bit. Uh, like this here, actually a few of these here, uh, are used for um, the Arduino uh, liquid crystal display. Uh, as well as I was playing around to see, as I previously mentioned, whether or not I could get low power mode on the Arduino to uh, to work. Um, but it turns out with the SD card, uh, there's a pin in there uh, that the SD card uses, uh, pin 13, I believe, um, that is required for uh, the low power, um, but the SD card is using that. So the libraries that I'm using for the SD card uh, are the SPI and the SD. Uh, and then dot h is kind of the the c plus plus or um, the arduino extension for libraries and then for the air uh, temperature and moisture sensor i'm using the dht underscore u and the dht um so the dht is kind of like the soil moisture sensor or not the soil moisture the, the air moisture and uh temperature sensor that is being used and um if we go down here a little bit you can see that the uh, signal pin of that sensor is being attached to digital pin 2. Uh, if we go over here to our uh, kind of s schematic or, or diagram of how the Arduino is laid out, um, I have that air uh, temperature and moisture sensor here uh, and the, the signal pin which is the second one if it's facing you from the left uh, is attached to our digital pin 2. Um, so the DHT11 is the model of this, and then we have the SD card module uh, here, as well as that soil moisture uh, sensor here. Um, the air moisture and temperature sensor and the SD card reader or module are digital, uh, and so they require some libraries to be used to interpret the, in the incoming uh, signal from them. Um, and then this here on the outside, the soil moisture sensor is analog, so we can just read the input there and we'll get a little bit more into uh, kind of the numbers that come from there uh, as well. Um, for all of these, I just use the, I think it's arduino.cc website uh, for each one uh, and how to wire that to uh, the Arduino. Um, so you can see that I set the, the pin for the sensor to pin 2, to digital pin 2, uh, and then I'm setting that model to the DHT11. So there's a DHT11 and then the DHT22. Uh, maybe there's a 21 as well, um, but you have to set this to be the correct one, otherwise uh, it doesn't compute the correct uh, values for the, so, uh, the air moisture and the temperature that comes in. <laughs> Um, here I'm setting the values for when the soil moisture sensor is dry, uh, I get an analog readout of 582, and when it's wet, I get an analog readout of 498. Um, we'll use these later to map the value that we get while reading the soil moisture um, continuously uh, between, between these two. So 582 will be uh, like a 0%. Uh, and 298 will be 100% uh, soil moisture. Um, this here is actually just uh, something that I've been playing around with. 
Um, so like I had previously mentioned, I'm hoping to add in a water pump. Um, so when the soil moisture gets low enough, our water pump will turn on and uh, increase the moisture uh, from the dry to wet. Uh, from the air moisture and temperature sensor, we're just kind of mapping those using an internal function for the DHT um, using that pin. So the DHT pin is pin two uh, and then type is DHT11. Uh, and we're creating this DHT object that we can later pull our information from. So within Arduino, we actually have two main functions. Um, there's gonna be this void setup and then if we scroll down a little bit here, and um, we have this void loop. Um, when we run void setup, this is gonna be only run a single time when the Arduino is powered on. Uh, so let's go through it and kind of walk through everything that's happening here. Um, for the soil uh, water pump, uh, I was setting here the pin mode for the water to be an output pin, that way I can write to it, um, but we'll ignore this for now. Uh, if we have a serial a monitor hooked up, which would be in, if it's plugged into our computer, uh, then we would set a baud rate, kind of have some of this print out here on the screen so that we know as soon as everything is working, uh, we can see that it is actually working and we don't kind of set up our, our Arduino to just start work or start running, but we don't actually know if it works. So this gives us um, a, a little bit of a more mental note that it's it's set up correctly. And then here, we're checking whether or not test.txt uh, exists on that SD card. Uh, if it does exist, uh, then we can skip all of this because we already have this written. But if it doesn't exist, uh, we're going to create it and we're going to set our file mode to um, write. And we're going to open that file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print a header. So when we import data into R, for instance, um, using like a read CSV or something like that, we can specify our delimiter that we're using. And in this case, we're using the delimiter of slash T or it's gonna be tab delimited. Um, this here is just specifying that we have a header, uh, but it's got that pound or hashtag symbol before it, uh, which we can set a read CSV to ignore. So once our SD card has that file and our header is written correct, uh, written to it, um, we can begin uh, the uh, air moisture sensor, um, basically tell it to start uh, reading the air moisture and the temperature. So that next loop after we get everything set up is called our loop. Uh, or our, the next function after we have our setup completed is called our loop. Uh, so what this does is essentially it'll run through all of the code within the loop over and over and over and over as long as there isn't really an error or there isn't um, power pulled. Initially, what I'm doing here is just basically sending a signal to our serial monitor, which isn't attached. Uh, so this isn't gonna do anything while it's hooked up to the plant over there, um, but just getting something to print out to say, okay, we've made it to our loop uh, portion of our script. Next, we're just gonna delay. So every single time the loop runs, it's gonna start with a two second delay. Uh, this just gives us a little bit of time before writing our moisture, temperature, um, humidity, that kind of stuff to the card. Then here we have um, variables that we're pulling out of the DHT air temperature and moisture sensor. Uh, so remember we have that DHT object with both the pin, which is digital pin 2, and then the type, which is the DHT 11. So we're going to read our humidity and we're going to store that as H. We're going to read our temperature, which is Celsius, and we're going to store that as T. And then we're going to read our uh, temperature and we're going to store that as F um, for Fahrenheit uh, with true here as the Boolean. If any of these come back as NA, essentially what that would tell me is that our sensor is not hooked up correctly. Uh, maybe a pin fell out of its socket, something something like that, uh, and therefore uh, we're not getting any information from it, um, that air temperature and, and humidity sensor. Um, so if that happens, I just have here um, returning nothing. So we're going to start the loop completely over if our air temperature and moisture sensor uh, fails. We're just going to 
start over and try to read it again. Once we do have data for our humidity and our temperatures, we can calculate our heat indexes or heat indices uh, for both uh, Celsius using the uh, compute heat index function within the DHT uh, object. Um, and then also the, the Fahrenheit uh, heat index using our DHT object with the compute heat index function. Next, we can read our value for our soil moisture. And remember, this is just analog, so we're just going to pull in a value um, between, I think it's 0 and 1023. Uh, with that value, then, we can map it. So we have this map function, and like in R, we have a map function as well. We specify what our wet value is. So I think that was the 580 something. Uh, and we're also saying, okay, that is equal to 100. And then our dry value, which was 298, I believe, is equal to, uh, maybe that's backwards. Wet is 298, dry is 582, yep. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna map our, our value that we get um, from our, our sensor to have a range between zero and 100 instead of 298 and 582. Uh, and so we're gonna get our moisture from, from mapping that there. Once we have our moisture uh, and our temperature, heat index, uh, humidity, what we can go and do now is write to our SD card. We'll essentially append uh, the last line of our uh, text.txt file with our new data. That's every two seconds. So we have H, which is our humidity, and then we have to feed in this slash txt, which is telling it that it's going to be tab delimited. Um, and then uh, temperature, so this is Celsius, tab delimited, Fahrenheit, heat index Celsius, heat index Fahrenheit, and then our moisture. Um, we do all of this after we tell our txt, uh, our test.txt file, um, that we're going to enter a write mode uh, with sd.open. We're, we're entering a write mode. Um, once all that is written, then we can do just file.close. After that, our whole loop, if we scroll all the way back up to our void loop, um, it just begins again. So every two seconds, we're getting a new row written here um, with our print and then our print line after our moisture, just carriage returning to the beginning of the line to, to redo another row. Uh, next time I'll go a little bit more into um, maybe some custom functions that we can write. So here I have void um, trigger pump, uh, which is essentially what I was trying to do to turn the pump on and off. We have our uh, pin number, which is true or, or not true, which is pin four. Uh, and then in here I have um, turning the pump on for a second and then off and then waiting 100 milliseconds uh, before continuing on to whatever would follow this if we were to call this trigger pump function somewhere up here.